Well, we're heading up to Lake Superior, Jackson and I, on our annual trip. And we're just stopping at Quick Trip to get our goodies here. And we're gonna load up the cart, load up the basket, get a bunch of junk food, and head up to Ashland, so. Oh. You ready to go, buddy? Yeah. All right, we're gonna hit the road. Well, we made it out on the ice, and Jackson's scooping out some mac and cheese here for lunch. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, we had a little trouble getting out here. It's still really slushy. We didn't make it as far as I wanted to, but lots of drifts and stuff. But we're marking some smelt, and we did just have a bite already inside the shack, so. Hopefully we're gonna get into some fish. Weather's nice, we got out of the slush. We're on dry ice here, so I think we'll be in good shape. Our plan tonight is to kind of put some jaw jackers out and do some jigging while it's still light. And then we're gonna set up for burbot with tip ups and live smelt after dark. So uh, right about that dusk time, we're gonna start transitioning over to tip ups and start fishing for those burbot. So I uh, think it's gonna be a fun day. Oh. Um, Jackson's already trying to catch some smelt for bait and uh, hopefully we'll we'll get into some fish here before dark and before the burbot turn on so we're gonna camp all night out here and it should be a fun time right buddy yeah to be close to evening here we just cooked ourselves up some ravioli for dinner and uh, we're still dropping down and catching a few smelt I think we got two perch a splake and a bunch of smelt so far so nothing too crazy but at least we're catching fish we're obviously in the right area and uh, we're hoping the burbot will be here chowing down on the smelt tonight so oh Dad's already got one. Oh yeah. Hey. Oh yeah. Schmelt city. Yeah. I'm just using a little eighth ounce tea flasher to catch these smelt with a couple of spikes on it. And that seems to be doing the job. Gets it down there quick and the smelt there definitely not too finicky to bite that. So it is working. Got another one. Wow, we're gonna I think have... we got enough for bait now. How do you did you already eat all those? Mm hmm. Hey Dad. Mm hmm Got a little bit of soup on me. Hmm. Why don't you lick it off? Grab my line. Alright, just after dark, first flag of the night. We may be on the burbot already.
right, first burbot of the night. Jackson caught this one. It's a really nice eater. And we're gonna put him in the clam fish well. Already got our splake from earlier in there and a couple perch. So this will keep our fish from freezing overnight. And uh, it'll be a really nice fresh fish for us in the morning. And Jackson's gonna show you around our little home away from home here. So this is my cot with my awesome pillow of course. And then dad's cot. And that's it. We got the heater set up right there. Jackson's cot over here. Clam rod holder set up. We got one dead stick down with the drag loose on it. And then uh, might be jigging a little bit too with the old trout and pellet spoon. And then outside, of course, we got our tip-ups set up with the vultures on them all ready to go. So we're ready for the night, huh, bud? We already got one bite, yeah. so that's a good start. Yeah. Well, we were just about to go to bed, and we have a flag. Let's go get him. He's there. Tell me, tell me, tell me. for these burbot is basically just a 25 pound fluorocarbon leader about a foot and a half long and then I've got three lead shot uh, just split shot pinched on there for weight and I'm only leaving about four inches between the hook and those split shot then I'm hooking a smelt right through the back with the treble hook and that way I'm gonna send those split shot to the bottom and that line's gonna be going up like this and he can't tangle up in that line by trying to swim up because we're using live smelt so we, uh, if we put these sinkers way back here, he's going to swim up and tangle up. So the bourbon are not finicky. They're not going to mind those weights. And then we're just going to send that straight to the bottom and spool up the slack on the spool and away we go. The reason we like to use live smelt is because those smelt just sit right on the bottom and they stir up the bottom with their tail and they kind of struggle in the mud. I think that attracts more fish than just a dead smelt laying there on the bottom. <coughs> Well, it's 11.15, we got about an hour of sleep and we got another bite, so we got to go catch a fish. How does it feel? Uh, it feels like a burbot. You know how they fight, they're like glitchy? Yep, they kind of wobble back and yep. forth. Yep, that's a burbot. Okay. Is he there? Oh my, he, he might there. be! He is there, what did he do? He swam. Oh, he must have swam back towards us. It feels us. weird, it's like a... I don't know. He what must have swam back towards us or something. I have no idea what kind of fish this is. It feels weird how it's fighting. Okay. Oh, oh, he's pulling down. Yeah, he's big. Whatever he is. Well, when you're fighting him, he feels like nothing. Really? Yeah. When he pulls, he's big. That is weird. It'll be interesting to get a look at him. Keep pulling, keep pulling. He's swimming at you. Pull, pull, pull. You still feel him? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh it's a big burbot. Oh, big burbot. Oh, no. Keep pulling slowly, slowly, slowly. Oh! Oh, 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 look at that! Oh perfect. my! Oh, what a giant! Oh. Oh. Look at that one, buddy. Look at the back. That is cool. Oh. Look at the pattern on that one. That is awesome. 
He's like white almost. Yeah. Look at that face on him. Wow. That is a cool fish. He's like almost albino, like mm -hmm. halfway to albino. He must have swam up toward you. Yeah. Wow. Where'd he go? I think I would have felt one that was that big. That's a big one. Nice. Wait, I thought it was nothing. <laughs> yeah. He's like over a foot. Oh, foot yeah. and a half. Yeah, he's well over a foot, is right. He was, I had to like pull him up the hole and he was heavy to pull. Yeah. I was afraid it was gonna break. <clears throat> All right, it's three o'clock in the morning here. We just got a beep on the vulture. It appears he is here. Oh yeah. Got him. Got him. Feels pretty small though. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> oh my. A big giant perch oh. ate our dead smelt in the middle of the night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? That's a big perch, man. Wow. That's the biggest perch I've ever seen almost. Probably a solid 12 inch perch. Ate our smelt off the bottom in the middle of the night. You just never know. <laughs> that is weird. Got him. Ooh, feels nice. Good. Feels a little bigger than the last one. Which wasn't that big. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, big one. Nice one. I know, they're so hard to get through the hole. Yeah! Oh, another <laughs> big one. Another big one. That's basically the twin of Jackson's right there, I think. Pretty close, maybe not quite as long, but pretty much as fat. That's another nice, nice fish. Sweet, what is that, five now? Yeah. Yeah. Five burbs. Turn out to be a pretty good night. All right, I decided to get a measurement on these two fish because they're both really nice and I'm just kind of curious what we've got here. This burbot is super long and that perch is a dandy too. So let's see what we got. Almost 12 and a half. Super fat too, really nice perch. This guy <clears throat> is gonna go a lot more than 12 and a half. Thirty-one. That's a thirty-one inch burbot right there. That is a nice fish. Definitely there. Got him? Yeah. <clears throat> nice, another burb. six I think for the night yeah. and uh, it's getting close to morning here and we've just been using these vultures to wake us up every time we have a tip up this is one of the best pieces of equipment that you can have for doing this because you can go sleep and not worry about a thing until that that beeper goes off and then you just go out and catch the fish so uh, I'll also leave a link for the rest of our gear that we were using on this trip <clears throat> but I'll definitely leave a link for these vultures so you guys can find them but uh yeah it's about to get light here we might catch a couple more fish before we take off but it's been a good night huh buddy mm -hmm. well it's starting to get light and uh we're packing up the cots here we're gonna switch the tip-ups back over to jaw jackers for the last maybe hour or two hours here in the morning but uh, we're not gonna stay too long but we might catch a mid-morning trout so we're gonna give that a shot kind of get packing up here in the meantime and see what else we can get. 
All right, so as we're picking up to leave, I'm gonna pull my fish well out of the ice here. And as you can see, I got all the fish in here and they're all still alive. Doing really well. We're gonna dump those out. I got my bucket all ready to go here. And what we're gonna do is before I load them up in the bucket, I'm just gonna slit the gills and let them bleed out here. That way the meat's nice and clean when I get home. I don't have to deal with that and uh, they bleed better while they're while they're still kicking anyway so well it was another awesome night on Chiguamigan and Bay the burbot bit well we ended up catching six burbot and uh, a few other assorted fish too we only kept four again this fishery is limited you don't want to over harvest these fish these are the only four burbot I'm taking out of Lake Superior probably this year so but man, when you can get a meal of them, it is worth keeping a few because they are delicious, right buddy? Yeah. And if you want to watch my other videos on burbot, I'll leave a couple links here. I've got one on how to fillet them and use the belly meat and everything else. So uh, feel free to click those videos. We'll see you next time. Get hooked up. Oh, well, we made it back to the ramp. What do you think, buddy? Was that nuts? I think we got stuck five or six times on the way back and uh, had to shovel out, but we're back on our way home.